Hello everyone, this is Narina from 40k Theories, and welcome to this new episode of 40k Law for Newcomers. For this episode, nominated on Patreon by that guy, we will be taking a brief look at the White Scars chapter of the Adeptus Astartes. This video will be a brief overview for certain events that may be explored in greater depth within additional videos within the future. So, without further ado, let's begin. We are the judgment of the free on the corrupt. We are the vengeance of heaven. While one of us lives to wield a blade, our enemies will not know peace. The White Scars are a loyalist space marine chapter that has served the Imperium of Man faithfully since the days of the Unification Wars and the dawn of the Great Crusade. Like all space marines, the warriors of the White Scars are genetically enhanced transhuman super soldiers that are larger, stronger, and more resilient than typical baseline humans. The chapter are famed for their use of hit and run tactics, falling upon their foes with both blinding speed and overwhelming force, much like the lightning bolt that serves as their heraldry. While many within the Imperium, including their fellow Astartes, see them as feral savages, this is a skin-deep conclusion drawn only by judgement of their aesthetic presentation. For all their supposed barbarity, the truth is that the White Scars are amongst the most decorated and lauded of all Space Marine chapters, having claimed countless victories in the Emperor's name over the millennia. Indeed, to view the White Scars as mere barbarians is to grossly underestimate their cunning and tactical prowess, in addition to their rich culture, as the chapter's warriors are not only highly skilled in the arts of war, but also demonstrate incredible patience and discipline. As such, whenever the chapter goes to war, the White Scars will stalk their prey with the proficiency of a seasoned hunter before striking with the speed and killing power of an arrow loosed from a bow. Warriors of Chogoris, brothers of the Great Tribe, the Great Hunt calls you. Do you not hear it? The battle's red edge is your home, the respect of your kinsmen your hearth. Plunge into the enemy's breast like a blade, cut out his heart, and you will know fulfillment. The Emperor has given us strength. In return, we give him victory. The White Scars were created by the Emperor of Mankind with the intention of being the 5th Space Marine Legion. Initially, during the later years of the Terran Unification Wars, the 5th Legion were utilized primarily as scouts and outriders, harassing and bleeding enemy forces to weaken them for the rest of the Emperor's forces. While they would rarely be deployed as a full army, the 5th would nonetheless prove incredibly effective in their role, even though they would almost never receive much in the way of public recognition or acknowledgement for their deeds, unlike the victory laurels frequently bestowed to other legions. When the Emperor's Great Crusade finally began in earnest, the 5th Legion would be one of the first to leave the boundaries of the Soul System, in where they would continue serving in their role as a scouting and vanguard force, being divided into a number of semi-autonomous pioneer companies in order to seek out new systems for the Imperium to bring into compliance, in doing so earning their first name, Star Hunters. It was around this time that the Star Hunters began to favor the use of hit-and-run tactics as their preferred method of waging warfare, operating in a manner akin to raiders, striking fast and hard before withdrawing and relaying any data regarding the enemy's strength and movements to the other expeditionary fleets. This was due in part a necessity, as the 5th Legion would not only suffer steady losses during the early years of the Crusade, but their warriors would often be simply too stubborn or proud to request aid from others, instead preferring to fight and die in a manner of their choosing. Even before being reunited with their Primarch, the 5th Legion warriors were known for being free-spirited, often to the point of insubordination, as they would rarely accept orders from anyone other than the Emperor or his direct representatives. Approximately 50 years into the Great Crusade, however, the Imperium discovered the world of Chagoris, a feral world of sweeping plains and mountain steps. 
it was upon this world that the Emperor was reunited with his lost son, Jagatai Khan, the Primarch whose DNA served as the genetic template for the Fifth Legion's various biological implants. Jagatai would eventually be granted formal command over his legion, and while the reunion with their Primarch was undoubtedly a momentous occasion, the Fifth Legion was still mostly operating as a series of pioneer companies. It would be a full ten years after the rediscovery of Jagatai Khan that the Primarch would recall his gene sons to Jugoris, the legion's new base of operations and primary source of recruits, where he would unite the entire Fifth Legion through a ritual known as the Blooding. To commemorate this occasion, over 50,000 Terran legionnaires would willingly undergo ritual scarification and adopt a new Tugorian name, which in turn resulted in the legion being known henceforth as the White Scars. As the Great Crusade continued, the White Scars claimed victory after victory in the Emperor's name, and would even play a major role during the events of the Alanor campaign one of the most pivotal campaigns of the entire Great Crusade, which pitted the Imperium against a vast Orkish empire ruled by the warlord Erlok Erg. Some time after the Imperium's victory at Eleanor, the White Scars were tasked by the new Imperial War Master Horus Lupico, the Primarch of the Sons of Horus Legion, with cleansing the Chondak system of Orcs, who were being led by one of Erlok Erg's former lieutenants, the war boss Erlok Erek. Little did the White Scars realize, however, was that this campaign was designed to serve as little more than a distraction, for, unbeknownst to the Legion, Horus had turned traitor and had begun orchestrating a rebellion against the Emperor in order to seize power for himself. Horus himself was a close friend and ally of Jagatai Khan and had no intention of destroying him or his Legion. Instead, he hoped to turn them to his cause later. In order to keep the White Scars oblivious to the unfolding rebellion, Horus bade the Alpha Legion to use their talents of espionage and subterfuge to actively prolong the campaign. It was only after the destruction of a Demiurg space station designated Tenebrae 950, which was being used as a base of operations by the Alpha Legion in order to jam communications, that the White Scars would receive a number of garbled and contradictory astropathic communications. Jagatai recalled his forces to the world of Chondax Prime only for the Alpha Legion to strike from both without and from within, with Fifth Legion warriors opening fire upon their brethren only to be revealed as Alpha Legion operatives that had infiltrated the Legion's ranks. During the ensuing confusion, Jagatai Khan successfully discerned the astropathic messages his Legion was receiving. One such report, directly from Horus himself, claimed that the Space Wolves Legion had turned renegade and had launched an unprovoked attack against the Thousand Suns, while another report from Rogal Dawn or the Imperial Fists stated that Horus had launched a rebellion against the Emperor and that any and all Loyalist forces were to return to Terra immediately. Eventually, after a brief standoff against the Alpha Legion in orbit of Chondax Prime, the White Scars successfully punched their way through the traitor blockade and escaped the system. Uncertain of what to do next, and of whom he should believe, Jagatai ordered his legion to set course for Prospero, the homeworld of the Thousand Suns, to uncover the truth, or lack thereof, of Horus' claims. It was while upon Prospero that Jagatai would encounter a psychic shade of his brother Magnus the Red, the Primarch of the Thousand Suns, who urged for the Khan to pick a side in the war, only to then be confronted by the Death Guard Legion and their Primarch Mortarion. Jagatai Khan declared both himself and his legion for the Emperor, for while Khan and Horus were themselves the closest of friends, the White Scar's Primarch held his word and the oath of loyalty he had sworn to the Emperor many decades prior above all other things, even the bonds of friendship and brotherhood. The White Scars and Death Guard fell upon each other in battle, but as this was happening, a large contingent of Terran-born White Scars led by Hasek Noyan Khan launched a coup against the Primarch to take command of the Legion and pledged the White Scars to Horus's cause. Thanks to the efforts of Shibun Khan, whose warriors were able to keep the would-be mutineers occupied until the Primarch could return to his flagship, this attempt at a rebellion was swiftly put down. After a brief orbital battle, the Death Guard were forced to withdraw. 
The surviving trader scars would then be reorganized into units known as the Sagia Mazon that were little more than suicide squads tasked with carrying out the most dangerous missions to atone for their crimes. For the next four years, the White Scars were forced to launch a number of hit-and-run raids against the Traitor Legion forces. Despite the summons issued by Rogaldorn, an increase in warp storm activity made it all but impossible to reach Terra. While their actions were slowly bleeding Horus's forces, the White Scars could not keep up such raids indefinitely. Eventually, after discovering an artifact known as the Dark Glass, a device similar in function to the Empress Golden Throne, the White Scars were able to utilize the alien subspace network known as the Webway in order to finally reach Terra. During the subsequent Siege of Terra, the White Scars continued to launch several hit-and-run attacks against the traitor supply lines as well as defending the walls of the palace. During the later stages of the conflict, the White Scars famously launched an all-out assault to recapture the Lion's Gate spaceport from the traitors, to not only provide means to strike back against the traitor fleet in orbit, but also to allow the long-hoped reinforcements from the Ultramarines Legion to easily make planetfall once they arrived in orbit in Terra. It was during this attack that Jagatai himself suffered grievous wounds in a duel against Mortarion, the traitor Primarch by this point having ascended to demonhood. The Khan, however, succeeded in banishing the traitor back into the warp after landing a blow that struck the Death Guard's Primarch's head from his shoulders. As their Primarch fell unconscious from his wounds, the White Scars were driven into a state of battle rage so intense that the Death Guard, having been demoralized by the apparent death of their own Primarch, were forced to withdraw once again. Eventually, however, Imperial forces proved victorious and the traitors would be forced to flee from terror. Though his wounds were severe, Jagadai Khan was able to make a full recovery. A few years later, following the introduction of the Codex Astartes, a text penned by the Ultramarine's Primarch Rebuta Gilliman, with the intent of never again allowing a single man to hold as much power as Horus once had, the Space Marine Legions were divided into a number of chapters, with the White Scars giving rise to the Marauders, Stormlords, Destroyers and Rampages chapters. However, during their prolonged absence, the Yasun Sector, the region of space where the chapter's homeworld of Tugoris is located, had fallen victim to not only mass rebellions, but opportunistic raids from the sadistic alien race known as the Drukhari. Jekatai led his warriors into the battle to reconquer the sector, but as the White Scars battled against Drukhari raiders on Coruscant 5, their leader disappeared through a webway gate, with Jagatai and a significant portion of the chapter's first company in hot pursuit. However, the gateway sealed itself shut behind them shortly thereafter, leaving the Primarch's final fate ultimately unknown. Run from us! We will chase you down and take your head. Stand and fight! We will salute you, encircle you, and slay you like beasts. Surrender to us, and we will reward your cowardice with a swift and painless end. Understand that you are not our foes. You are our prey and you will meet your end as such. Over the past 10,000 years, the White Scars have been involved in countless conflicts and campaigns, including the Makarian Crusade, the Battle of Magulath Bay, the Third War of Damnos, and many, many more besides. One of the chapter's more notable engagements was the liberation of Quintus, an event otherwise known within Imperial records as the Hunt for Voldorius. In late M41, the White Scars learned that the Alpha Legion Demon Prince, Kernax Voldorius, an enemy that the chapter's previous master of the hunt had been pursuing for several decades, had made his way to and subsequently taken control of the Imperial world of Quintus, a strategically important world that served as a bastion against the many Orc warbands infesting a nearby region of space known as the Jaggle Stars. The White Scar's third company, under the command of Corsaro Khan, the chapter's current master of the hunt, made planetfall upon Quintus, intent on taking the Demon Prince's head back to Jagoris as a trophy. 
To their surprise, the White Scars encountered warriors from the Raven Guard chapter's third company, led by Shadow Captain Kaivan Shrike, who, having independently learned of the world's descent into chaos, were in the midst of waging their own guerrilla war against Voldorius's forces. The two chapters, whose rivalry spanned thousands of years, formed an uneasy alliance in the face of a common foe. The following morning, Shrike's Raven God launched an assault against an orbital defense laser battery with such speed and ferocity that it would throw the enemy into disarray. In response, Voldorius dispatched half of his forces, including Alpha Legion Astartes, Traitor PDF, and hordes of mutants, to retake the battery complex from the Loyalists. The Raven Guard, having managed to entrench their positions, mounted a fierce resistance against the traitors, forcing them to pay for every step they took in blood. Eventually, Voldorius's men used a Baneblade Super Heavy Tank, designated the Iron Soul, to break through the Raven Guard lines, forcing Shrike to personally lead a counterattack in order to seal the breach as best he could. Despite their best efforts, the Raven Guard would ultimately be forced to give ground to the traitors. But just as Voldorius' army overcommitted itself for the final push, the White Scars, having concealed their positions and numbers from the enemy, struck, cutting down guardsmen and heretic Astartes alike with lightning speed, destroying the Iron Soul and forcing the surviving Alpha Legionaries to withdraw back to the world's capital city of Mankara the most heavily defended region of the entire planet. The combined White Scars and Raven Guard forces launched an assault upon Mankara itself, taking out its anti-air defenses with a bombardment of Hellstrike missiles before using Thunderhawk gunships to deploy their warriors quickly. The White Scar sped through the winding streets, while the Raven Guard stormed the upper walkways and rooftops, both chapters slaughtering all within their path. Such was the ferocity of the Loyalist assault that many of the traitor PDF forces would attempt to surrender, only to be cut down where they stood. Eventually, Voldorius and his bodyguards were cornered by Shrike and Corsaro Khan squads within the local cathedral, leading to a final showdown. Despite being trapped with no avenue of escape, Voldorius was still a demon prince of incredible power and slaughtered countless loyalists during his last stand. However, after being impaled by Shrike's talons and pinned against the ruined statue of the Emperor, Voldorius would finally meet his end when Corsaro Khan struck the final blow that cleaved his head from his shoulders, in a manner similar to how Jagatai Khan himself banished the demon Primarch Mortarion so many thousands of years ago. Despite this, it would still take Imperial forces over a month to fully bring Quintus back into compliance. Corsaro Khan and Shrike departed from the world, having earned each other's respect and putting an end to the rivalry between their two chapters, at least for the time being. Voldorius's head was impaled upon a spike outside of the White Scars Fortress Ministry of Quan Zhu, where it serves still as a warning to those who stand against the Imperium and a testament to the skill and martial prowess of the White Scars chapter. Many of our cousins refuse to retreat. They see it as dishonorable. They are fools. Ten thousand victories have started with a retreat. The only dishonor is in not coming back. The White Scars are officially listed as a Codex Compliant Chapter, meaning that they adhere to the tenets and guidelines laid out within the Codex Astartes. Despite being recognized as Codex Compliant, the chapter nonetheless diverges from the Codex in a number of admittedly minor and ultimately inconsequential ways. For example, the psychically sensitive warriors of the chapter's librarians, instead of being referred to as librarians, are known by the Chagorian title of Stormseer. Another example is shown within the titles given to each of the chapter's companies, which are known more informally amongst the White Scars as Brotherhoods. Whenever an aspirant Astartes is inducted into the chapter's ranks, they will undergo a ritual of scarification in where a shape is carved into the warrior's face before having searing hot ash rubbed into the wound. 
The ash will then cause the resulting scar tissue to become raised and eventually whiten, resulting in the warrior becoming a true White Scars warrior. While the White Scars adopt many aesthetic choices that the Imperium considers savage and uncouth, the chapter's warriors are in fact cultured and learned, enjoying pastimes such as calligraphy, philosophy, painting, the composition of poetry, and holding these pursuits in high esteem. The White Scars are a chapter of warrior artists and philosophers whose seemingly feral appearance has, more than once, led not only enemies but also allies to underestimate their tactical prowess. In battle, the White Scars favor the use of fast attack vehicles such as bikes and land speeders, with the chapter's slower elements such as Terminator or Devastator squads making extensive use of transports such as Land Raider tanks or Rhino APCs to carry them into battle. Indeed, while the White Scars may favor the use of hit-and-run tactics, they understand that heavy armor and firepower have their place upon the battlefield. The chapter also holds a fairly unique point of view when it comes to dreadnoughts, constructs that serve as both walking tanks and mobile life support systems for mortally wounded space marines. While the majority of chapters view being interred within a dreadnought sarcophagus as one of the highest honors a warrior can receive, to the White Scars, a Dreadnought is a being to be looked upon with both a degree of grief and pity. To the White Scars, the idea of being interred within a machine, never to experience life's simple pleasures or the boisterous camaraderie of others, is one of the worst fates imaginable. As such, most of the chapter's warriors will actively avoid being around Dreadnoughts whenever possible, with only Apothecaries and Tech Marines ever willingly doing so even if only for the purpose of performing regular maintenance rituals. Because of this, many of the warriors who find themselves interred within a dreadnought will undergo a ritual of rebranding, in which they take on a new name and identity for themselves to represent the death of the warrior they once were and the birth of the being they have since become. Regardless, Dreadnoughts are rarely deployed by the White Scars, except in the direst of circumstances, which in turn for many centuries led Imperial historians to believe that the chapter simply did not utilize Dreadnoughts in any capacity. The Gene Seed of the White Scars is noted for both its purity and stability, displaying little to no signs of degradation or mutation. However, as to whether or not the chapter's Gene Seed exhibits a psychological flaw is up for debate. The supposed flaw, which some have termed Chigorian savagery, is said to spur the White Scars into committing unrestrained acts of frenzied violence. However, as to whether or not such a trait is indeed inherently tied to the chapter's gene seed, or is simply due to the psychological profile of the tribesmen the White Scars recruit from, or even simply a falsehood propagated by the chapter itself, is another matter entirely. And that concludes this edition of 40k Law for Newcomers. If you like this video, consider supporting us on Patreon for more content. To those that are new to 40k, we hope you learned something. So, leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.